Welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. Thank you all so much for checking out the channel. For those of you who are watching, instead of listening, camera angle's a little different because we got some better chairs, finally. They're, they're real chairs. Like, they're, they're, they're real, real chairs. chairs. They're not a drum thrown and some sort of ergonomic stool thing, maybe? <laughs> there, we, we got real chairs. <laughs> they're real chairs. We got real boy chairs, so we're real boys now. Um... And um, for those of you who are listening, uh, today we're actually going to talk about something that Matt's been wanting to talk about for a long time. Yes, I'm excited. And uh, basically, ever since fandom has existed, and even before that, um, you have had story and lore. And those two things oftentimes can culminate together to make something just epic, or they can kind of contradict each other. Now, in modern day gaming... Ooh, yeah you end up with games that have story and then games that have lore. And we're here to talk sometimes about... Both. Yeah, right. Sometimes both. And we're here to talk about which one is more gravitating and uh, what... I don't think that's a word. Gravitating? That's not a word. It's so not a Let's word. Let's get into this video. This is story versus lore and uh, what we look for in those two things. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you ring that notification bell, and make sure to share this with everyone you know to help us beat that massive YouTube algorithm. So you want to know what I realized is I need oh one God, of those clapper I hate, things I hate for when you. we do this. Uh, <laughs> all right, and like every YouTuber on the planet, believe it or not, our <laughs> metrics are actually telling us that only 50% of the people checking us out are actually subscribed. So go down below, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And if you guys really, really like what we're doing here, share this with everyone that you know because we love having conversations and we love actually interacting and getting new ideas. Yes, we're actually about absolutely. We're actually about to film a... Uh, um, a conversation after this one uh, that was kind of uh, suggested to us by a conversation that we had with uh, yeah, one somebody of our commented, Somebody commented on one of the videos we put up. That is the is the Series X in Trouble video. Check it out. Um, but he, no, uh, they commented and had some good points and we're going to talk about we're it. We're going to talk so, about it. So anyway. know that you are always part of this conversation and if you comment below, you might get featured or we'll make a video off of it at the very least. Absolutely. So. All right. So lore versus story. Uh, Matt, this is kind of your baby that you've been talking about for a while. And, well, yeah, and the more we've had these conversations, the more I see where you're coming from. So. Well, it, it's the difference between, you know, because obviously where I come from with uh, lore is it's like the story behind the story. It's the, the world, world building. Yeah. And it's all of that. It's, you know, what happened prior to the events of the game or just the main narrative. Whereas with, like, a story, that would be just, you know, what happens as you the play. The narrative, yeah. Yeah, indeed. And so, you know, for a good example, uh, Dark Souls. Dark Souls is very lore-driven. Whereas, yeah, really, the plot is some zombie dude goes and kills a bunch of things to go try and light a fire. That's pretty much the story. Yeah, and uh, then... Uh, Dead Space has... Dead Space's story is... Hey, some Zambia aliens are on the ship, and, and you didn't know about it. Have fun. Kill, kill, <laughs> That's, kill, kill, kill the know. Zambies, man. Versus, kill, kill, kill the Zambies. You know, well, okay, so one of the games I actually love talking about with lore, if we're going to be on the lore subject for a minute, one of the games I love talking about lore is uh, Fable the Lost Chapters. See, and now this one I'm less experienced with because I obviously know the story of Fable, which is, you know, a young boy has his town raided by bandits and then becomes a hero because... Apparently that's what happens. Your town gets raided by bandits, and you turn out to be a badass. Well, but, no, but, there, but the lore of that story is there's bloodline, which you do get some of it. No, that's you do true. start to learn a lot reductive. about Jack of Blades, and that he wants to bring the dragons back, and actually wants to become a dragon, and succeeds and, too and, in the Lost and, Chapters and, and expansion. To, yeah, and the, yeah, he does. He does actually. Yeah. That's the Lost Chapters. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I didn't actually play the original Fable, and I would not actually play the original Fable because Lost Chapters is just so much more. Um, but no, That's you really do have do. you you have a metric hell of lore in there, and you can read about the world and how uh, uh, a lot of the wars, the see, wars of the see, past. So, and so many games have that world building and that lore, and some of it is really cool. Um, take uh, Skyrim, for example, they, that has a ton of lore books that you can read about certain factions and whatnot. And I'm not gonna lie, I haven't read. Well, I haven't and read so any of for them. me, what well, made the few. game what made the game for me was. Uh, so Fable of the Lost Chapters and actually KOTOR 2 have this same thing in common, was that well, lore. KOTOR, because Star the, Wars, so well, yeah. Well, good Star Wars. But no, but yeah. that's what I, the, what made those games, because this is lore versus story, what made those games for me is absolutely the lore. 
because the story because oh, like, oh, the stories are almost paper thin. No, I disagree because I like Kotor 2's story. The whole idea of obviously it's got to be amnesiac or somehow otherwise you know you wake up and you don't know where you are sort of thing, right? Mm-hmm. You wake up on the space station, Kreia finds you. You go reconnect with the Jedi, and then it turns out that you are well, like that, this. But abyss- Kotor Two is a retrospective game because everything you're learning about your character is just a retrospective. That's all wow. Kotor Two is. So it tells it tells a very different but story. I didn't, I, you know, the lore on that one feels like cheating because it's Star Wars. The lore is pre-established. Yeah, I mean, I I kind of yeah, I kind of. But no, but finding out your character's backgrounds, finding out your uh your companions' backgrounds. Finding out how certain stations came to be, why they are, who the you know the different factions, the wars, the all that stuff that kind of leads to this this certain confrontation that you're in. Because ultimately, the idea here is you're just in this confrontation, and actually, well, yeah, the story yeah. of the story of Kotor is one of those that is you're an amnesiac. That's you know, Kotor one, yeah. Uh, Kotor two does a little. It bit does of a that. little bit of it. That's why but I not back not as off, heavy but. handed as Kotor one. Kotor one was really good. But you're being manipulated through Kotor two, but a yes. lot of that lore. So now, so now we get into games that was story. Well, and you know, here's the thing, right? Is that proper world building and contextualizing events? That's all the story is, right? You know, you contextualize the events, you contextualize the uh, locations, and you contextualize who you're fighting. Yes. And so, like, take Dark Souls, which is very story light. There's not, there's no cutscenes. There's very little spoken dialogue. Just a few. You know, characters you might meet along the way, oftentimes who are just shopkeepers. Yeah. Um, and they're not, not that they're not interesting or have their own arcs, but they're not contributing to the main thrust of the narrative, which at least in, um, actually no, in all of them is linking the fire, linking the first flame, and uh, which keeps everything on the cycle. And that's part of the lore is you start to learn what the first flame is, what the cycle of the undead and the darkness and who the dark lord is and who the gods were and Anne Orlando and... You know, all this, and Vatavidia could do such a better job of explaining this than I could. But, um, no, and actually I went to his channel to learn a lot about this. But the lore on it is just incredible. But if you didn't pay any attention, and so much of it is told through the item descriptions. You pick up a shield, and it turns out it's this famous knight's shield. And then you fight him as a boss later on. And it all interconnects in this really interesting way. But the plot is really thin. It's, you're a zombie who has to go link the fire. You're a Zambi. Carry the Olympic torch. Uh, pretty right. much. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So so now, all right. So so your idea here, lore versus story. Okay, so let's talk about some story-driven games. That all right, you all right, all right. Story-driven, story-driven. Because let's get a compare contrast here, and then let's actually go into the verses here, and let's... Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll do you one better. We'll get a uh, contrast here, and then we'll go into a uh, marriage of the two. Okay. Okay. So, uh, contrast, at least. A very story-heavy game that might not have the biggest lore world building because either it doesn't I mean, need it or just I, I would go it. with you know probably the last of us any of the uncharted games are so kind of that naughty dog where it's very yeah. character driven but yeah because um, I'm, I'm rdr2 not... not a lot of lore but good story from what i'm to understand well, but what lore is there it's the lore of the old west yeah i mean it's yeah, yeah. you know but again character driven good story great off the bat um i think uh um no those are good examples so far uh, RDR one falls into that too because again God, Old I'm West. Trying to, I'm trying to pick my brain on on. Uh, uh, I mean, you can't really throw Halo in there because Halo is a lore game. <laughs> well, not hey, initially. Hey, hey, hey. The no. lore behind it really exploded um, after I think two, and uh, you started to see. Obviously, you ha- we had the uh, Eric Nyland book, The Fall of Reach, and we had the um, kind of tie-in novels that kind of filled in the gaps of what happened to Chief between. Um, the first Halo ring and coming back to uh, Earth, where we see him at the beginning of Halo 2, right? But that's not really lore. Um, we didn't start really getting the lore building with Halo until Halo 2. That's where, because right. that's where, you know, you think about the contrast between Halo 1 and Halo 2. In Halo 1, you open up on the Pillar of Autumn, mm. and Chief wakes up and you just start blasting aliens. Whereas in Halo 2, it opens up on the destroyed Halo ring, and you get your first look at the actual inner workings of the Covenant. Well, and that is story and lore that are working in tandem. And obviously, there's a lot more you can read behind the scenes. But you really start to understand the structure of the Covenant. Well, and and so, I think Bungie was actually really smart on that. Well, yeah. And so so let's go into you know the, the story-driven games. Like, uh, you know, obviously, and you can't say, well, there's Thor in them, and that's what makes it. No, there's history, you 
Uh, but the Uncharted. obviously the Uncharted games. Yeah, the, that's the, not the, lore. That's just history. That's, Sir Francis that's Drake history. really existed. Yeah. Henry now, Avery they put really their own existed. Twist on it. They put their own twist on it, but no. But they, they, they do, but there's not a lore. They're, they're not creating their own universe. It's not a separate timeline no. or a separate universe where no. there's and a bunch so, of things. It's so, not like a, for uh, people who are already typing in the comments, it's not Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed does have lore because they alter history, whereas Uncharted just goes, there's a gap there. We're going to put this in there. Yeah. But it still follows our timeline. Yeah, and yeah. so... You end up with these games that are hugely fun. They're great to go through. They're definitely, definitely got to play through more than once. Oh, they're uh, you great. Know, obviously, and The Last great. of Us is, again, just this story-driven narrative that is just this, you know, this wonderful, this this wonderful road trip across a Zambi-filled, you know, America, you know, Zambi-filled post-apocalyptic America where a Z- guy Z- learns... Zambi and, you know, mean people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... But no, really it's, it's, these really, games it's based you, on the strength of Joel and Ellie and Joel and Ellie as a no, and, and so you really do, that makes you, it you you really see no a lore. lot of games out there that don't have a harmony of the two of the story and the lore. No, because the converse of that a game that does horrible on the story, but really good on the lore would be like Destiny. The lore is fantastic and it contextualizes everything and it makes you sit there and just face bomb. And why isn't this in the game? I've said this more than once. Yeah, I know it is a have. thing. I know. Yeah. Um, I, I no, was, and if, I've been there. you know, again, a good channel for that one is my name is Bife. He explains, and it makes the game a lot richer. The lore is amazing, but the story is non-existent. And that's one of those things that you really have to sit down when you're talking about lore versus story, is because you and I have had this conversation so many times. Is yes. What makes this game good? What makes this game good? And we're like, well, the story sucks, but damn it, the lore is good. And that's one of those things is like. Honestly, in order for me to care about lore, is I gotta have a little bit of a story. Well, like, and you know, here's the thing: is uh, maybe this is just me being a Halo fanboy and following the Halo makers, right? Um, but I do love me some Destiny. I might complain about it, but the sto- the ongoing story, and it's told very slowly. But there is an ongoing story. For example, the darkness has invaded at the time of this recording, and they're about to blow up like four of our planets. Yay. Yeah. And so this is a story that has been building back since Destiny launched in 2014. I don't know why it took us six years to get here, but hey. Um, so no. That so book the, would suck to read. Yeah, no kidding. But the point is, is that what filled in that gap was that lore. So I obviously have my patience, but if we're talking about a marriage of lore and story, I already brought up the Halo 2 thing. Mm-hmm. And I do think that Bungie really stepped up their game. Hey, Bungie again. Um, with Halo 2. And um, I kind of wish I'd do that with Destiny. But um, well, how about really I, one there. of the ones that I heard that just had such great lore and story and is still considered one of the king of video games today is The Witcher 3. Well, that's, again, a little uh. bit cheating. <laughs> I well, guess no, because you, we're you're talk, not you're not in But we're going to talk about the marriage of the two now because yes. there's not a lot of games out there that no, seem to no, be able to do there this. Are, there and, are and two. And you kind of have to ask the question is top of my why head. why do you why do are are game developers incapable of being able to marry the two? I don't they know. Cuz they seem to lean heavy towards one and heavy towards the other I, and they I are think a lot of it comes two down totally different storytelling. I think it comes elements. down to time constraint. I mean, if you look at the proper world building where we turn to and we say you know, this franchise really had just, you know, tops world building. We look to Tolkien. We look to well, and, Lucas. And, and then we, on top of that, Tolkien's lore, which is just more and more and well, more. Well, that's the and, thing. And is then, I to- Tolkien wrote story, a lot of And then his story is just impeccably good. And so, no. Well, I, and actually, Tolkien is the, is the reason we have modern fairy stories, which is what they were called. That's also what he was going that's, for. I mean, that's, that's, he but, is the reason that no, we Tolkien, have this. So Tolkien, in my mind, is like the gold standard, right? Yeah. And uh, Well, yeah, he's the father Luke, of Lucas modern being fairy kind story. of, you know, in that realm, but in film well, as opposed so, to so literature. If, so, if, if, so if we're talking that marriage, and that, uh, there is a point to this, is that The Witcher... Yes, it is a good marriage of story and lore, but they it's like making a Lord of the Rings game because Witcher is a book first. Hmm. A lot of that pulls from Polish folklore and was written by... I'm not even going to try. Uh, <laughs> pa- uh, a, like very a, good a, vowel, a very good, a very good a, author. A very um, good author because we cannot um, pronounce his name. I, I do apologize. I'm a bit snarky about it, but I cannot say it, and I do apologize. Yeah. Um um, if I do, I, I here here's my butchering attempt. Andres Andres A. Zepkowski? Um, Zepkowski. Zepkowski, I can do the first one. I cannot. Um, but no, he t- he pulled from Polish folklore, 
and he wrote his stories, and then the games then looked at his stories and incorporated it into the games. And so, again, it's like, it's it's not a tie-in or a, you know, adaptation so much as it is a continuation, and they pulled very heavily from it. So, yes, they did a fantastic job, but they did have some ground to stand on. Mm. Where I'm coming from in terms of that lore story, uh, marriage would actually be the first Mass Effect back in 07. And obviously very inspired by Star Wars, but it's still its own thing. Right. They had their own races, their own galaxy, their own inner workings, their own inner uh, species politics, their own intergalactic politics, their method of FTL travel, how people get you know from A to B, the mass relays, the Reapers. All of that was created by Bioware. There was nothing else. And as you learn about the Reapers and you learn about the Asari and you learn about the Turians and you learn about the Krogan, all this history and lore and world building and the story and you meet these races and you go and you try and fight the Reapers... All ending at the battle of uh, the Citadel, the seat of the galactic uh, government, just works. And in my mind, that is actually the perfect marriage of lore and story. is because the, the lore gives you more context, but the story is still engaging. Okay, so... And it's, you, it's all uniquely original. And so originality is not a must, because I do love me some adaptations, and I do love me some uh, based on... Actually, but, I, I think that if everything was original, then nothing would be... Kind of, you know what I mean? Well, yes. But and that's kind of where you well, end up. Well, even Mass Effect is not original. No. And, but when I say original, I mean it's not based on a prior work. No. Um, okay, so so then let me ask you this question here because this is something that I, I'm thinking about it right now. Lore versus story. When you think about your top games, are they lore heavy or are they story heavy? And what – just just answer that question because I have a follow-up. Okay. Um, so your top games are they lore? Don't you don't have to name them. Just are they lore or story? Outside of one, they're mostly story. Okay. How many? Uh, that'd be three. Okay. Um, I, I'm gonna cheat, and I will name them. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna name franchises here: Mass Effect, Uncharted, and Red Dead as my top three. Um, okay, but one of those is a fifty-fifty story. Okay, so you and then the last one is Destiny, which is obviously very lore, and then Dark Souls. So I guess two are lore, three are story in my top five in terms of narrative. Okay, engagement. so... Um, so you, you seem to be drawn more towards the story. Well, compelling characters are compelling, yo. Well, yeah, okay. So what strengths does, does story have over lore? Well, moment to moment, you can, you obviously have a cast of characters that you can follow, you get to know. And we're social creatures. If I can socialize with these characters, I'm obviously going to be more interested than some esoteric dude who died a thousand years before my character even turned up. <laughs> okay. What, um, what do you think that lore has over story? Um, I think it can really give context to the world you're in, why you're doing things, why things the way they are. It can lend a certain level of gravitas when you walk up and you're on dungeon number 87 in Skyrim and you go, "Eh." but all of a sudden you realize, oh, no, this is, this is, uh, Sheogorath von whatever, uh, tomb. All of a sudden you perk up a little bit. You go, hey, I read about this dude in that book over there. This is like legend. How did I feel? Oh, this is cool. I'm excited. Kind of how I felt when I went to, uh, Korriban. In uh, Kotor two, exactly, I, exactly, and, exactly. And all of a sudden, I'm standing in front of you know Marco Ragnos's statue, s- statue, and you're just like, tomb and, you just feel that weight. You know, or, or Exar Kun, and you're what, just what like, is lore? Oh. But fictional lore is fictional history, and so it's the same thing that you know us Americans, right? Mm-hmm. We go and we go see the Lincoln Memorial, and you look at that big statue of Lincoln, and you just think about all the history that happened there. Mm-hmm. Well, lore is that, but fictional. So you create a fictional history. And all of a sudden you realize, oh, crap, this is where, you know, the uh, king of the rays sat and raised his army and became the witch king of Angmar. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, um, it just lends itself to it. Okay. And, and so, so that's that's where I kind of. And so for me, I think I, I would say this. But if your story is dog I, I shit, think, then I'm not going to. This is, this is kind of a I might not because, make it there. Because when I, when I think <laughs> about it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is if the story is dog shit, I, I, I think you're 100% right. Um, so I think for me, if I'm going to have to go here, because I, I, I want to get here because this is the controversial point yeah, of the yeah, video. Yeah. And so for anybody who's made it this far in the video, I'm going to make a very controversial point, And I want comments down below. Hot takes. So this is a very controversial point. 
Hot I topics. am more of a lore guy. Yes. But the fact of the matter is, is if I need the story to get me there. And yeah. But yes. once I get to the lore, I almost don't care about the story anymore. I, I think I that think lore a blending of for the two me. No, and is... I, no, here's the thing is because lore versus story, Matt, this was your title. Well, also I recognizing lore, the discrepancy between the two. Which I, think I think that game developers covered, need but. to learn how to do a marriage of the two. But honestly, if we're going to get, if we're going to have, if I'm going to have to pick between a game that has, you know, 80% story versus 20% lore or, you know, 80% lore versus 20% story. Destiny I'm Dark going Souls. lore. I'm going lore. So I you, am, you I am, prefer I, the, I am you, preferring, I just need enough. You prefer the Destiny or Dark Souls method where all of a sudden, you know, you rescue some dude on your weekly mission. It turns out to be Saint Fourteen, and you go, "Wait, I know him from the lore." The games that, as opposed I, to meeting Saint Fourteen as being kind of like one of your companion characters, mm-hmm. and he's with you on the story. Mm-hmm. I all every time I think of the games that I that are so endearing to me that have held through, and again, I bowed out of gaming for twelve years, so all the games that I'm talking yeah, about are almost yeah. twenty years old at this point. Some of about eighteen, don't nineteen years. Don't say dates. You don't say dates. I think that lore is more important to game development than story. Well, it's world building. And when you understand what the world building is. What do you think? um, I know we're running out of time, but I do want to make this point. You brought up the dead space thing where it's a bunch of space zombies, but you don't realize because you haven't you know, looked into Dead Space that it was a... Not enough story there to get me interested. Yeah. I, so but, I do need that. I do need a little bit of that story to get me there. All of a sudden you realize that what killed the dinosaurs was actually the Black Marker crash landing on Earth and the Yucatan that sent out a signal discovered by Michael Altman, who was a researcher who then went and found and discovered the first necromorph but was killed by the government to uh, make him a martyr that founded the Church of Unitology who built the very marker that you fight in Dead Space. That's the nutshell. Lore story. What do you think takes it? I, I like it when there's a decent blend of both. That's really where I'm at. Is it's you got to take it. You, it's your title. It's your title. Lore versus story. I'm I didn't realize it. I was gonna get pigeonholed into picking one yep. either. I know you didn't. I gotta go. Story when it when it comes down to it, and I talk about what I'm going to sit there. I, I can still picture scenes from Red Dead Two. Okay. I, no, and that's totally fair. And yeah. that's what's so controversial about the, about this idea. And I, I love the lore and destiny, but it was all explained to me by other people. When I come back to uh, what impacted, that's not a proper word, but what gave me, <laughs> had the biggest impact on me is, um, is story. I think about Dutch, and I think about John Marston, and I think about Arthur Morgan, and I'm sold. I think about Joel and Ellie, I'm sold. I think about Nate and Elena and Sully, I'm sold. But when it comes down to Laura Destiny, it's cool, it's interesting, it's great material for me to drive up to places, because I get to sit and listen to mm-hmm. it, but... In terms of raw engagement, now nah, when I sit and play Destiny, I'm mostly just trying to get my weeklies done. All right, so guys, we're at a 50-50 split. I, uh, I I know where he stands. Obviously, I think both of us 100% say that the perfect marriage of the two is exactly what we would want. We'd like you know a 60-40 or a 50-50 or something in that range. But if we're gonna have to pick one, I pick lore. He picks story. I, didn't know and I was we, going to have to pick he, one. But. No, I know, but that's exactly why I did that because you didn't know, and yeah. I wanted you to think about it on the spot. Okay. That's why I did that. But now it's your guys' time. We want to know down below. Lore versus give us story. Lore versus story. What do you like if you have to pick one? And you do have to pick one. Give us three games and then just tell us why those games, uh, you know, give us, uh, tell us lore. Then I want three, three games. games. Tell us your lore or story. One of those. Give us three games and then go down and tell us why lore or story matters to you more if you have to think mm-hmm. about that. So let us know down in the comments below. And if we really like what you guys are talking about down there, again, we may just make we a can video do a follow on up. it. We may just make a video yep. on it because you might give us something to think about. And who knows? We might even change our opinions on something. We go, wait a minute. I didn't think about that. Yeah, and that actually does happen all the time. So thank you all so much for watching A Drink With Crazy. And until next time, cheers, everybody. Cheers, guys. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.